Hey, what's happening, everybody? Uh, this is gonna be a quick one as I have uh, about 15 20 minutes. I gotta get this done. Um, not that I really want to rush things, but I don't think I really need that much time for this one, so. Bit of coffee. Got the old uh, Luxor there. And uh, I have this Dunhill Navy Rolls. Uh, so, this is my thoughts on Dunhill Navy Rolls. So, I've had this tin for two weeks, and I have uh, four slices left. pretty slices Your traditional uh, coin or roll cut or whatever you want to call it mm. there's something really unique about this tin note uh, I'm assuming it's from the African tobacco that's in here It almost almost has a fishy lake smell. <laughs> Reminds me of uh, the lake in Wisconsin, but it's it's still it's not. I wouldn't call it pungent, but it's uh, it's natural, definitely. But yeah, almost in a weird way, it reminds me of a kind of a fishy lake kind of smell, <laughs> albeit that it could be sort of fitting to the fact that it's navy rolls. So, well, navy would imply oceanic. Uh, weird mood today. Weird mood. Been a long week. Been a stressful week. Uh, let's see. Almost 53 hours this week. A lot of... I don't know. A lot of nonsense. Uh, and, you know, life stuff. Kids. You know. Dealing with the kids three nights a week on my own. Uh, which, they're, you know, it's not bad. It's just stressful. You know, especially when one of them's not mine and, you know, I have to mind my P's and Q's with how I deal with him. That's, oh God, that sounds so horrible. He's a good kid, but you know he's he's seven. He's he's a seven-year-old boy, you know. So yeah. there's gonna be some mischief. He's as innocent as it usually is. He's, 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 you know, comes with the territory, but you know, there's somebody in the equation. Be able to overreact if they so choose. Chose. So, you know, I gotta, gotta really think before I act. But uh, yeah. So, let's do this. get a little more in-depth than what I used to. I've got a little more pipe smoking tobacco handling experience and um, I 
I've had this tin for two weeks. I uh, did not jar it like I normally do. And uh, I would say from the time I opened it until now, it's remained smokable. Um, it is significantly drier than when I first opened it. But um, it's still, it's not overly dry. There's still some good moisture to it. So why don't you get in that wonderful Scandinavian tobacco group uh, cut. You know, just amazing ability to cut things nice and thin and just really deliver a good product. It's going to be sad to see Dunhill go away because of that. I really hope SGG does something about offering something comparable to the, the entire Dunhill line, even if it's not called Dunhill and even you know, whatever, even if they might have to change the recipes just a little bit here and there for legal reasons. It would be nice to see them continue on with, or offer up something of their own, whatever, to replace the Dunhill line. There's been rumors about them in uh, Cole House and Culp, which <laughs> uh, Bradley from Stuff and Things has trouble pronouncing that, but uh, having taken German classes in high school, two and a half years of it, it's Cole House. Yeah, Cole House and Kopp. I'm not going to go into all the rules of German language and why it's Cole House and Kopp. So, like pretty much all of the Dunhills. Rub these flakes out, pack them up, takes flame easy, stays lit really well. Even when it was moist. And I picked up the three different flakes when I was at John's uh, 1792 uh, Bob's Chocolate Flake and Dunhill Navy Rolls, um, which even though it's coin, it's still it's a flake. Um, stays lit when you're not yakking. Um, but I will say, this one, as far as mechanically behavior, taking a light, keeping a light, once you get it going, it's a lot easier because of that very fine cut. You know, it's, the 1792 is cut a little bit thicker. It's not quite Enerdell thick. Neither is the Bob's Chocolate Flake. But, um, you know, it does take a flame better than those two. <laughs> so let's talk about flavor. How does it taste? Definitely sweet. Uh, the Africans, I'm assuming, are a strain of Virginia. There, there's definitely something different. Which, it's not quite fruity. Maybe that grassy kind of thing. Slightly yeasty. That kind of almost sourness. Definitely that kind of dark fruit and spiciness from the Perique. Very figgy, plummy, plus that peppery. Uh, kind of Perique 
anything. There's definitely something different. I have not quite been able to put my finger on about the Virginia flavor. Let's see if I can tease this out here. Yeah, there's some sharper brass like Virginia there. Because I had to get her rolling again. It's been I don't know, it's been a day or two since I've had any of this. So have to refresh the memory a little bit. See now I'm not sure. If that kind of yeastier flavor is just a mix between the Virginias. Or the the way that the flavors of the Virginias and the Perique mix. I'm not so sure that it's strictly the Virginias giving it that kind of thing. I'd say overall though, it's kind of almost a really like dry wine kind of flavor going on. Almost reminds me of like a cheap Merlot, like barefoot. Drank a bottle of that or two of my time. <laughs> but for Virginia Perique, it's pretty laid back. It's not, I don't know, it's not in your face, but still rich. Still flavorful. Plenty to ponder about the flavor as you're smoking it. Definitely a, definitely a unique Virginia Perique. It's got all the you know, hallmark traditional characteristics. Of Virginia Perique, but it definitely has its own unique flavor profile happening. You know what? I'm gonna go with borders on soapy. That fresh, <sighs> that fresh scent that you get from soap that could be put into a palatable flavor without being gross. It's got a touch of that. It's not the the main thing, but it's a very clean taste. Very good. Very, very good. Now I way overpaid for this because I got it from a you know John's which you know, anytime you go to the store, you know, a tobacco store or pipe shop or anything like that, brick and mortar, some people like to call it, you're going to pay more. But I think even these are, uh, you know, a dollar or two more online than, than the other Dunhill blends. Um, I think they're like 10, 12, somewhere in there online. I paid pretty much twice that. But, you know, I don't mind that occasionally going, you know, overpaying for the, the product itself, for the experience of going down and hanging out at the shop and getting to sit and chill. And there's always interesting conversation going on down there. So it's, uh, I'm not complaining. And, once again, the, the whole capitalism commie argument. I'm definitely not communist. I'm definitely capitalist. But I, I do have problems with uh, capitalist corruption, which I think is a correctable situation. Uh, I, don't, I don't see that as necessary. I think we could find a solution for that. Uh, so, not to tangify 
go off on a tangent here. But it has relevance, I'm sure that people <laughs> know what I'm talking about. Or certain people. Um, but yeah. Even at that price, I, I feel like it was worth it. Worth the experience of uh, smoking this tobacco. Even overpaying. Um, so, Dunhill Navy Rolls. Um, go and get you some before it's gone. Uh, especially if you're one that enjoys Virginia Periques. Snatch up a tin or two. At least to give it a try before it disappears. So uh, I'm at 20 minutes now and I'm sure my wife is ready to go and not happy that I'm doing this instead of uh, whatever else she wants me to be doing. We gotta go to my cousin's daughter's first birthday party. So uh, so later on I'll be editing and uploading. And, uh, That'll be it, so till next time, take it easy.